Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today, someone has sent me in something absolutely gorgeous. Um, this guy has sent me quite a few things, and they are all Ducati related. But they are failures, and they are beautiful failures. Some of these failures are really useful to us, but not only that, some of these failures are ones that you don't see too often. So, one I'm going to start off with, I have, um, you may have seen this on the Facebook feed. Oh, passed out. You may, you may have seen this on the Facebook feed. This is a, well, it's a mess. But as you can tell what's happened here, dropped a valve and the valve has, basically it hasn't hammered the piston. The piston has hammered into it because it's got nowhere to go because there's a combustion chamber, a piston, um, a valve head and it just goes bang 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 like that so it's basically like a um, cu um, oh, fucking bread kneader but engine style and steel and aluminium style so you can see that yeah that's fucked and that's just basically what happens if you you know these are all let me just get it clear these are all race engines so this is yeah <laughs> see you later I'll put some pictures up now these pictures are I'm just picking that box up these pictures are the actual head. Um, he didn't send me the head, which is fine. It doesn't really need to. It was just nice to see that piston. And she is fucking proper tossed. So you can kind of see, this kind of sets the mood of what kind of failures we are going to see. So what we've got here is uh, two 1100cc uh, monster pistons from the same engine. And these pistons have had a bad life. When they fitted to them, they increased the compression ratio and you can see that on the top of the crown there's two divots there's that one there and that one there that's basically for the uh, twin spark plug and he was saying that basically um, the heads that they were running didn't have twin spark plugs or something like that uh, the details really are important because it's the failure that we want to look at we just want to look at it um, so straight away I know what's wrong with these straight away I'm sure he knew what was wrong with these but this set and the following video which is the next set the next set is really juicy because we've seen this before but for this set um, this is kind of like a textbook example of detonation so if you look around the side of the skirt here just above the ring lands and the rings you can see that it's pretty smooth and what have you and on this side it looks well it looks like shit so let me just bring you in Master of Zoom. Right, so. <laughs> you can see these pistons. These have only done run, one run, he said. And again, if you set your compression too high, it doesn't matter if your engine has done uh, 50 runs at the track or 10,000 miles. If you change your compression, it all of a sudden turns to shit. So you can see there, around this top region, that it's just, it looks like, like striations. Now, when we look at the top of the crown... You can see here that we've got usual carbon deposits. But what's interesting is, is that it's getting hotter and hotter here because you've got detonation. Detonation is where what's meant to happen is your spark plugs fire. And what's happening here is that this spark plug fires and this region over here, just it just combusts. So if you imagine that this lid is your combustion chamber when your piston's at TDC, or just before your uh, or during your ignition event what's happening is is that in an engine usually you'll have a spark plug here at the top it fires and it creates a flame front and all the rest of it detonation is where it doesn't maybe just if it's before the spark plug fires that's pre-ignition um, but basically what's happening is is that multiple points around this it, within this volume are basically igniting it's not just the single one from the spark plug it is in this corner over here over here over here now Ducati obviously know this because if we look at this piston and this piston you'll notice that they are basically um, on the same side now if this I don't have the I haven't asked him actually there's a bit of a boo-boo on my part but that's an intake valve, that's an intake valve, so these cylinders would be basically like this, orientated in an L, like this, to each other. Let me zoom you back out a minute, to make this easily understandable. So basically you can see that this relief here in the piston crown and this one, they are bigger. So let's write that on. 
Where's a fucking pen when you need one? So this is the intake and this is the intake. If you can see that, yeah, you can just make that out. Or, let's not be a dickhead. Let's get the paint pens out. But anyway, what's happening is, is that we have intake there. Is that a H or is that an I? We have an intake here. And we have an exhaust here. The exhaust is a smaller one. The exhaust valve is smaller. Like so. So these pistons are in an L, which is a 90 degree V. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean, Ducati wankers. But anyway, so these pistons are like this. They are both facing on the inside because the throttle body assembly is bunched together and the exhausts basically stick out of the furthest, uh, the further, further away basically. So like this. So if you look at this, we've got detonation here and detonation here. So on the same side. So I imagine what's happened is, is that they have the two spark plugs this side when the when, that were fitted to the engine. On this side, there were no spark plugs. So what's causing the problem? Well, this, this is one of the reasons why they have two spark plugs. You can kind of see with this massive raised, raised section in the middle that there's a lot of squish in the centre, squish band around here. This is the combustion chamber. But because you've got these kind of two flanks, it's almost like there's two separate combustion chambers and that's why they want to go bang and fire both. What's happening is, is because of this large squish region around the outside and because of this wall in a sense, because if you're a flame front, this is a wall, you know, you've got to go up the bloody fucker. Um, what's happening is, and this was probably discovered by the Ducati when they basically started getting a detonation, is the fact that it is, in a sense, almost like two virtual separate combustion chambers um, that are thinly, if you want to put it that way, joined in the centre across this, uh, bridged across here. So, this is what you would call a, um, a very, very common detonation. So when we're looking at the R3 video and people say, oh, that's, that's pre-ignition, that's detonation, stuff like that, and I said, I don't think so. The reason is, is because it didn't look like this. So out of the two, no, before we get out to the two, if you rub your finger across here, it's very smooth, right? There's no carbon here, not or not as much, it's not as dense. It's smooth, it's smooth, it's smooth. As you run your finger along, it gets rougher and rougher, and it starts to feel like pumice stone when you get to about in the centre where it's the worst, and it's it, it's just really, really rough. It's like a it's like a 400 grit sandpaper, that's what this feels like. Same thing here, nice, nice, smooth, oh, we're getting a bit there, oh yeah, we can really, it's really crusty there, really fucking horrible. So I've, I'm going to splice in some pictures as I go along of some microscope images, because I just wanted to show some of the details of this. Um, so basically, the fuel is detonating on this side, it is detonating where the highest compression is because the highest compression is around here in the squish band region literally as the piston comes up up oh, we've lost the light as the piston comes up it's been squished into here let me there that's a better way of doing it squished into there so momentarily there's going to be a higher pressure in this region and the fuel just goes fucking sayonara boom there you go and it's actually when these random ignition events, and there can be thousands of tiny little ignition vents, when they slam into each other, it's called um, cold flaming, or cold, it's cold, no, cold flames. When you get cold flames, um, this is localised pockets of fuel and air that don't really, they take actually longer. Detonation is not a quicker burn. Detonation is an uneven, sporadic, random burn that happens all over the place is we have two different, from the same engine, we have two different types of detonation that are occurring, or two different types of failure. So basically, if you can see here, what's happening is these are like these striations that go down. These are like jets, like bang, 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 like jets that fire down as these ignition events occur. And they basically, this is eroding. That's probably basically what's happening is it's firing down and it's eroding like little jets, like little streams. And as you can see, as soon as it hits the ring, so if I push the ring out, that's where your ring is. As soon as it hits the ring, it stops. This is bad. I've got some pictures here, especially of this one. This one's the worst one. Now, this top ring is basically encapsulated. This is folded down. 
um, so it's kind of trapped the ring and you can see as soon as this ring is stuck in its groove it started to fire past that it's gone to this um, gas gap this gas channel and the ring lands it's blown past that and what's happened here is it's got so it's so hot and so weak because it's been firing past it that it's actually caused when you apply a pressure to this it's actually caused this to bow the gases have made it so far they've probably come down here this ring is trapped this second compression ring is trapped you can see it's trapped there and they're not meeting up properly these gases have fired down past this ring it's now stuck down to the second ring they've gone along the second ring and can I rotate that no I can't rotate that. that's literally where it, I'll show you the rest of it in a second it's fired through the ring gap and it's basically bulged you can see it's bulged down which is not what we saw with the R3 so a bit of a closer in look you can see that basically it's just blown past this and it's made the the top ring stick so is that the only gap in the top ring yeah so this is where the top ring uh, end gap is it's made the ring stick um, it's just stuck in there now because it's basically eroded away and it's pushed metal into it so this rings basically stuck in the ring groove which means it's not thrusting out and sealing which means that the detonation continues and goes down to this second ring land it's got a gas channel in this um, second ring um, the land between the top the compression ring and the second ring and then basically what it's done is it's blown down and it's actually blown this ring in half if you look right there where I've just pulled that out there we go that ring snapped that ring has snapped and this ring when pressure is applied to it this snapping of this ring has pushed down onto this and bored it out but notice that it pushes down not up like the R3 we'll get to the R3 in a minute now this is all mushed where this wrist pin is this is because he's just bashed it from this side and this has all come down a bit this bottom surface here below the oil control ring has come down and it's just caught it so that's after the fact damage and that's why this wrist pin is stuck let me see if I can get that out but um, this is classic detonation where's the bloody hell's my smackers smackers what that do yeah that'll do um, this is classic, classic, classic detonation. There we go. Let's get that wrist pin out. Um, yeah, like I said, this is classic, classic detonation. If you see this, you're detonating like a bastard. Um, but yeah, removing that uh, wrist pin out of the way, you can see that it's it's guffed up at the top there it's only guffed up because like I said it's bashed it through and it's rubbed on there but that's just showing you that this wrist pin there's a circle up in there but this wrist pin will pass under there there's a relief in the piston for it to pass through but this is bored down so much that it's actually guffing on the wrist pin underside the pistons are extremely clean if you look at that there's no burn marks and all this this will become important later on but there's really nothing under there it's when you look at this uh, <laughs> when you look at this detonation and then this bowing down this bowing down that rings uh, given up the ghost there are some tiny shiny bits on that ring on the end where it's nipped up in the bar you can see that just on the end just right there where the brake is um, the ring end gaps so the ring gaps here they look fine there's nothing wrong with the ends of the rings this is the second ring so it's basically blown past the first one, it's trapped it in the cylinder and it's just said fuck off get out of my way. It's blown past that and it's basically just started to eat into the second ring land. It's blown down, found a gap round and where it's the weak point above this because it just say if this band here is your detonation region. It's basically pretty much right below it, the gases are trying to push down. This is what happens when metal meets high pressures and forces and stuff like that. Um, the rest of the piston is completely fine. There is no real, apart from this detonation, on the one that isn't as bad, it just hasn't made it that far. You know what I mean? It just hasn't made it that far. And the rings, the rings rotate, the rings are complete. Where this one, if we go digging, the top ring, is it the top ring that shit the bed? If you can see there, the ring has deflected a bit. You can't see shit. 
right there that top ring has deflected its board down but if you notice we're not pushing like when you see the r3 people are saying oh the rings are butted together and it's pushed up well these are getting completely fucking battered to the point where they snap see these rings and i think i can do this now because we've got it rings are brittle really let's see if i can show that let's see if i can show how oh fucking hell how brittle these rings are get out of my way so let's see how much we can deflect this ring before it snaps so i'm going to try and get square on with you yeah not much and in a short space like that it's nothing much at all these rings are not floppy a lot of them are like i say they're either chrome or least some kind of sexy alloy uh cast iron so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I've shown you some of the pictures, um, but we're just going to go through some looking at the pictures. You'd be forgiven to thinking that this uh, surface is the side of a rock face, <laughs> not the side of a piston. More importantly, and I'll show you the real thing here, um, but what we've got is around this section here, uh, you can see that it's basically all chewed away. And that's one of the problems is the gases are coming down, hitting the piston, and they're just basically, it's a corner. And if you have a corner, just like the top surface here, it erodes this bottom corner. Uh, the, 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 the side of the piston leading in, so the top land leading into the ring groove, it'll just blow this shit away. It doesn't give a fuck. Um, this is like, uh, you know, you have like um, sonic cleaning and stuff like cavitation stuff. It's not cavitation, but basically it's the power of cavitation. You can use, you know, ultrasonic baths to make cavitation bubbles that will basically abrade away shit and all the rest of it. This is like that, but just a, a hell of a lot more extreme, where you're actually abrading away, um, well, metal. It's like, if you know what uh, EDM is, um, not the music. <laughs> not EDM. Fucking hell. ESI and stuff like that. Uh, wire eroding. Wire eroding uses the spark, little sparks of arcs of electricity in a medium to basically erode away. It's almost like ablation in a way. But um, really clearly is that this is where the heat is coming. Uh, this is where the heat is coming from. This is where the force is. This is the molecules, everything, the combustion going bang, bang, bang. So when things fail, they're going to go that way. You know what I mean? They're going to go that way. Because even in com when you in compression stroke, the forces are pushing this way. In the power stroke, the forces are pushing this way. Everything is pushing this way. So when you see a failure like this, uh, or this is what you expect to see when you see a combustion failure, any kind of combustion failure. Hope that makes sense. The next one is absolutely fucking sweet. And we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that one. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Look, they fit together perfectly. It's just a shame they haven't got flat tops. Look at that. Just, just, just beautiful. I might even glue them together. No, nope, I'm going to keep these because these are excellent examples of detonation. Look at them fuckers. Oh, one other thing quickly. I did a uh, just a really shit clip video of looking at this side with the microscope and shifting over to that side and seeing what this fucking landscape looks like and i'll play that now hope that makes sense and i've already done this bit